This is your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Friday, September 20th. So glad you can join us. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. A government minister today threw his support behind the legalization of marijuana to allow the Rastafarian community to use it for religious purposes. It's coming from Minister of the Environment and National Beautification, Trevor Prescott. Delivering the feature address for World Abbey Day at the National Botanical Gardens, the minister said he fully supports the call to allow Rastafarians the right to be able to use the herb in their practices. Rastafari can be seen as a genuine religion, and if they use cannabis um, for sacramental purposes, then I personally believe that they should be allowed to do that. Minister Prescott suggested there is no harm in using a little of the drug, and he believes Barbadians are now beginning to accept the use of cannabis and its medicinal benefits. People are now beginning to accept the use of cannabis. Um, and its medicinal value because contemporary scientists and um, persons who are practitioners in the area of medicine, these people are now accepted, the pharmacists are now accepted as a genuine um, medicine. It is now accepted by people from the from that, 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 that fraternity. Frustrated parents of Sharon Primary students are demanding answers about the closure of the school. Education authorities closed the school this week because of environmental issues. But the parents who are planning to take a petition to Education Minister Santia Bradshaw want to know the nature of the problem and what plans are being made to ensure their children return to the classroom. My daughter is in class four, as are the daughters of these uh, two parents here. And we're extremely concerned because our children now have missed a full week of school. And we don't even have any notice as to what is going, what is happening, what steps are being taken to get kids back in school. Honestly, we would have thought that by now the ministry would have been back in touch with us. We were actually asked to come here to a meeting, which we then hear is, can is cancelled that we're wait they're waiting for the ministry to make official contact with us. But to us, a week out of school is too long. So this is a week and no representation from the Ministry of Education as yet. No representation from the school. We do not know who called the meeting. There was nothing official in terms of who called the meeting. We do not know why the meeting was called. We do not know why the meeting was called off, right? And we still don't have a person from the Ministry of Education here representing or to address us. And this is one week that the school is off. Not only that, we do not know who is investigating the issue at the school right now. And school is supposed to be on Monday, and we do not know when our children are going back to school. Again, we have we are class four parents. We need to understand because at the end of the day, our children are set to sit an exam on a particular day. So, are they going to be sent together to another location? Are they going to be broken up and sent to different schools? What are we doing? Is the school going to be open? Is the school closed permanently? We don't know. A 36-member contingent of the regional security system is off to the Bahamas. The police officers from Barbados, Antigua and Barbuda, Dominica, Grenada, St. Kitts, St. Lucia and St. Vincent will be deployed for three weeks. This evening, they were inspected by Prime Minister Mia Motley and Attorney General Dale Marshall. Prime Minister Motley urged the officers to be patient and emphatic as they perform their duties. I want to ask you, as you go to Nassau and then to the other islands of the Bahamas, to recognize that you are going in a situation of great difficulty for most people. Not just those who were in Abaco or those who were in Grand Bahama, but the entire nation of the Bahamas has been affected by this. Put yourself in their position. Whatever patience is required, exercise it. Whatever tolerance is required, exercise it. Whatever firmness is required, hold to a line. But remember always that we are there to help and to understand because none of us would want to be in that position of many of the people who have been left homeless, or who have lost members of their family today. 
When the Police Certificate of Character Office reopens on Monday, it will not be business as usual. In fact, Attorney General Dale Marshall says in a matter of weeks, Barbadians will be able to receive their certificates in less than a week of applying. And in the longer term, citizens will be able to apply online. This is an occasion where we now have a happy coincidence of the completion of the digitization project. And that allows us, therefore, notwithstanding any technical difficulties that we have, to be able to announce that from Monday, Monday coming, the Certificate of Character Office will be reopened. And we expect that, the, while there will be some delays because of the backlog, uh, we expect that from Monday, we will be able to see certificates being issued at a much, at a much faster rate than currently issued. And therefore, within the next few days, I think the Barbadian Society can expect not a return to normalcy, but certainly a, a, a move towards a better uh, state of affairs as far as that office is concerned. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today, news you can trust. The regional news, Jamaica's Prime Minister Andrew Holness has proposed the creation of monitoring programs for national programs such as crime and corruption. He made the call as Jamaica wrapped up its monitoring arrangement with the International Monetary Fund. All of those require consensus. Sometimes we don't see the crisis in these issues because we are not at the brink and we continue to survive. But in all of them that I've mentioned, Jamaica is in a crisis. Crime and violence, there is a crisis there and we require a similar consensus with similar oversight as to the programs that are going to be instituted to improve public safety and national security. On the international front, millions of young people flooded the streets of cities around the world today to demand political leaders take urgent steps to stop climate change, uniting in a worldwide protest inspired by 16-year-old Swedish activist Greta Thunberg. More in this report from Reuters Television. On all continents, and when I say all continents, I mean all continents, even Antarctica, even on Antarctica, people are striking. Because this is an emergency. Our house is on fire. And it's not just the young people's house. We all live here. It affects all of us. And we will not just stand aside and watch we are united behind the science and we will do everything in our power to stop this crisis from getting worse. Why should we study for a future that is being taken away from us? And that's news, but for the very latest, visit us at www.barbitistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We are also on iZumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Have a wonderful weekend.